what is the limit as x approaches 4 of square root x minus 2 over x minus 4? So what should you do under these circumstances? We can't factor this expression. So how can we simplify? If we plug in 4, 4 minus 4 is 0, the function will be undefined. So we can't use direct substitution. We don't want a zero in the bottom. Whenever you have a radical, what you need to do is multiply by the conjugate. The conjugate of root x minus 2 is the square root of x plus 2. And whatever you do to the top, you must also do to the bottom. So on top, we're going to FOIL x times x, or rather, the square root of x times the square root of x is the square root of x squared which simplifies to x. And then root x times 2, that's going to be positive 2 square root x. These two, that's going to produce negative 2 root x. And finally, negative 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. Now on the bottom, we're not going to FOIL. We're simply going to rewrite it exactly the way it is. Now, 2 root x plus negative 2 root x, these two cancel. And so we're left with the limit as x approaches 4 of x minus 4 divided by x minus 4 times the square root of x plus 2. So now these two expressions will cancel. And so we're left with the limit as x approaches 4 of 1 divided by the square root of x plus 2. So at this point, we can use direct substitution. So that's going to be equal to 1 divided by the square root of 4 plus 2, which the square root of 4 is 2. So we have 2 plus 2, which is 4. So the final answer is 1 over 4. Let's work on another problem. What is the limit as x approaches 0 of the square root x plus 2 minus square root 2 divided by x. So we can't plug in 0, otherwise we'll get a 0 in the bottom. So we got to get rid of that x somehow. So just like before, we're going to multiply the top and the bottom by the conjugate of the numerator. So on top, let's FOIL. So when we multiply these two, the square root of x plus 2 times the square root of x plus 2, that's simply going to equal x plus 2. And then if we multiply these two together, we're going to have square root 2 times square root x plus 2. I'm just going to leave it like that. And if we multiply these two, we can see that the middle terms will cancel. And finally, negative square root 2 times positive square root 2 is negative square root 4, which is negative 2. On the bottom, don't distribute. Simply rewrite it the way it is. Now, these two terms will add up to 0. Positive 2 and negative 2 adds up to 0. So now what we have left over is this expression. At this point, we can cancel x. And once the x in the bottom is gone, we can now use direct substitution in the next step. So this is going to be, let's make some space. So this is equal to 1 over square root 0 plus 2 plus root 2. 0 plus 2 is 2. Now what is the square root of 2 plus the square root of 2? The coefficient in front of both of them is 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. So this is going to be 1 over 2 square root 2. Now, that's your final answer, but you could rationalize it if you want to. So let's multiply the top and the bottom by root 2. The square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is 2. And 2 times 2 is 4. So it's going to be root 2 divided by 4. That is the final answer. Now let's talk about the limit of rational functions. 
let's say if we want to find the limit as x approaches 3 of 1 over x minus 1 over 3 divided by x minus 3. How can we do so? As we can see, we cannot use direct substitution. In the denominator, it's going to be 3 minus 3, which is 0, and it will be undefined. So what should we do under these circumstances? What we need to do is we need to multiply the top and the bottom by the common denominator of these two fractions, which is going to be 3x. Notice what happens if we do so. So let's distribute. 3x times 1 over x is equal to 3. 3x is the same as 3x over 1. These will cancel, and you'll be left with 3. So we're going to have a 3 on top, and then 3x times 1 over 3, the 3's cancel, leaving behind an x. Now we're not going to distribute the 3x on the bottom, we're just going to leave it in its factored form. And let's not forget to rewrite the limit expression. Now, notice that 3 minus x is similar to x minus 3, but it's not exactly the same. So what we need to do is we need to factor out the GCF, in this case, negative 1. If we take out negative 1 and reverse 3 and x, negative x will become positive x, and positive 3 will change to negative 3. So now, at this point, we can cancel x minus 3. So we're left with the limit as x approaches 0, I mean not 0, but 3, of negative 1 over 3x. And now we can use direct substitution. So it's negative 1 divided by 3 times 3. And so the final answer is negative 1 over 9. Let's try another similar example for the sake of practice. So this time we're going to have the limit as x approaches 0. 1 divided by x plus 2 minus 1 over 2 divided by x. So go ahead and try this problem. So notice that the common denominator between these two fractions is x plus 2 times 2. So let's multiply the top and the bottom by x plus 2 and 2. So now if we distribute these two will cancel, leaving behind a 2. So we're going to have the limit as x approaches 0 with a 2 on top. And when we multiply these two, this time the 2's will cancel, leaving behind x plus 2 with a negative sign in front of it. On the bottom, we're going to have an x, a 2, and an x plus 2. We're not going to distribute anything on the bottom. Now let's distribute the negative sign on top to uh, these two terms. So now we have the limit as x approaches 0 and that's going to be 2 minus x minus 2 divided by 2x times x plus 2. So positive 2 and negative 2 will add up to 0. So we can get rid of those two. Now, in the next step, we can cancel something else. Notice that we can get rid of an x. Once we get rid of the x on the bottom, we can now substitute at this point. So we have negative 1 divided by 2 times x plus 2. So this is equal to negative 1 divided by 2 times 0 plus 2, which is 0 plus 2 is the same as 2, and 2 times 2 is 4. So the final answer is negative 1 divided by 4. 